here we have a line in slope intercept form, which is y equals m x plus b. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, not plus 10, plus b. Okay, so four is the M and 10 is the B. The M is the slope. And the B is the second coordinate, the Y coordinate of the point zero 10 or zero B. So there you go. There's an old fashioned, really easy to do problem where you've got the slope and you've got the Y intercept. I mean, you see it immediately and that's the reason to have a, um, a line expressed in that form. The equation of a line expressed in that form tells you the most amount of information you can get. On the other hand, over here on number three in your homework. Number two is just like number one. In number three in your homework, uh, that's a gobbledygook mess. All right, well, we have to solve for y in order to find the slope and the y-intercept. So let's do it. We're going to solve for y. We start out with 3x equals 2y plus two, and I need to isolate the Y term. So I need to get that plus two over to the other side. I need to make it equal zero over here on the right side. So I subtract two because two minus two is zero, but everything I do on one side of an equation I also have to do on the other side. So I'm going to have to come over here and subtract two as well. Now what that gives me is 3x minus two equals 2y plus zero. And 2y plus zero is just 2y. So I'm going to erase the plus zero because we don't need it. Now to get y by itself, since we have two times y here, I divide by two because it's the opposite of multiplication. All right, and when I've got a straight line, what I do most of the time is I divide each number separately by two by this number right there, the coefficient of the y. That's what the number in front of the variable is called. It's called a coefficient. So we'll have y equals three over two x minus two divided by two, which is one. So, oh, x, so three over two times X minus one equals Y is the same exact thing as Y equals three over two X minus one. And now we have Y equals M X plus B, where B is the negative one and M is the three over two. Notice you don't write the X when you're writing slope. Slope is a pure number. Okay, and we come up here and we see the way they've written the answers. The slope is three over two, or three halves. Not three halves X, but three halves, just a number. If you take a higher level math course, you'll find out that three over two is called a scalar quantity. It's like something a scale is made out of. It doesn't have a variable along with it. Meanwhile, the y-intercept will always have parentheses because it's a point. will always have a zero in the middle 
because x equals zero on the y-axis, and then the number is going to be negative one in my sick looking uh, arrow right there, negative one. And so that's how you would do that. Now, this is going to take the slope formula. Yes, and I know you remember studying the slope formula, but it's not fun. I admit it's not fun. The slope formula is M for slope equals Y two minus Y one over X two minus X one. Now, where do those come from? We have two points here. I usually let the first point, unless there's a reason not to, the first point is X1, Y1, and the second point is X2, Y2. So what I do is I just substitute the numbers for the symbols here. Y2 is going to be negative 7 minus negative 3. Notice that negative sign has to be there. So if this Y quantity, if Y1 is a negative number, you put it in parentheses like that. So you'll have negative 7 minus negative 3 over 1 minus 7. Since it is a double negative, doesn't that mean it's adding it? Yes. And it's good to take an extra step to say negative 7 plus 3 over 1 minus 7 is going to be negative 6. Meanwhile, negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4. So you'll have negative 4 over negative 6. And doing this by hand, the negatives cancel. There's my kitty. I have two of them. You never know who's meowing. Um, and then 4 over 6 is going to reduce because 2 goes into 4 and 2 goes into 6, so I'll divide each of these numbers by 2. Which will give me positive 3 over 2. Uh, no, 2 over 3. Is there a way to make the calculator do it? Yes and no. I'm going to drag out the calculator here. You have to be able to get to this point and oh, that's going to be so ugly. If I were you and you wanted to do this on the calculator, here's how I do it. Negative sign seven. Minus sign parentheses negative three parentheses close. Now stop there and hit enter. So you've got the number that's going to go on top. Then come over to the bottom and say one minus seven, enter. And that gives you the number on the bottom. Then say negative sign four divided by negative sign six. Math, frac, frac is right there. Enter, enter, and that will give you your answer of two thirds right there. The only way to do this in one step would be to put an extra set of parentheses around the entire top, which would give you nested parentheses, which would confuse anybody. Not the calculator if you do it right, but it could definitely confuse you. So you have to be careful.
OK, anyway, we got. We arrived at our slope, which is positive. Two thirds, and I think it is a good idea to get the calculator help you to help you. But just remember when you're working with slope, it's really advantageous to uh, find find what the top equals separately and then what the bottom equals separately and then put them together. That's much safer. OK, so yes, you do need to memorize this. <clears throat> You'll be using it a lot. At least in the beginning. M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Write it on your brain. All right, here we're going to look at slope a different way. Slope is also considered rise over run. Where this is the rise, the vertical side is the rise, and the horizontal side is the run. And this comes up a lot in the construction industry, in roads, in treadmills. We're being asked to find the grade, the grade of the treadmill. And grades are given as percents. So we're not just going to find the slope, we're going to find the percent. So let's get to it. Right now, this number here, just to write it a little bit bigger, this side of the treadmill is 0 0.4 feet. And this run, the length of the treadmill, is five feet. So we're going to take 0 0.4 or just 0.4 and divide it by five. That's our first step. Step, haha, <laughs> get it? It's a step treadmill, yeah. Okay, all right, getting out the calculator. Point four divided by five. Enter. Now this gives you point zero eight. I'm going to write that down. This is the grade written as a decimal. Remember, grade and slope are the same thing. Now, we need to be able to take a decimal and change it to a percent. And the way you do that is you take the decimal and you multiply it by 100. So I'm going to take 0 0.08 and I'm going to multiply it by 100. And that's going to give me 8%. So the grade of this treadmill is 8%. So those are the steps to doing that. First, you just divide. The rise divided by the run. You get a number. Then to change this number to a percent, you take the decimal number or the number you got when you divided the, the, uh, the length of the vertical side divided by the length of the horizontal side, 
you multiply it by 100, and that gives you your percent. We have, let me make this bigger. We have another slope problem. This, side, this time we're working on a roof, okay? So we're going to find the pitch of a roof. That's the slope. But this is also given as a percent. So the first thing we're going to do is take the rise and divide it by the run. So rise over run. Gives us one foot. Divided by 7.5 feet. Definitely going to a calculator for that. One divided by seven. 0.5. And that's what I get. So I'm going to take this and Move it up here. Doesn't need to be that big, that's for sure. So our answer is this run on decimal. Okay, uh, not a problem. We're going to take this number and we're going to multiply it by 100 which you can just do in your calculator. In fact, you don't even have to type it over. All you have to do is multiply, hit the multiply key. Answer means the last number put into the calculator. So answer times 100, enter. And now this is 13% and a bunch of decimals. Well, it just so happens, I didn't copy it, I don't think, but um, uh, it's asking for the nearest whole percent. Let's see if I copied that. Nope. So we're looking for the nearest whole percent. And for the sake of people who are less familiar with calculators, I'm going to copy that and put it on this page as well. Um, 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 here. I love this snipping tool. And everybody loves this snipping tool to the point that Microsoft has made it bigger and more elaborate. And now it's called Snip and Sketch. And you can get that free if you have, have Windows, and I'm sure Apple's have the same thing. Here it is. I mean, not the same exact thing, but the Apple version of it. Okay. So, we're rounding to the nearest whole number. Here's the whole number part. I look immediately to the right. The number three is not large enough to make this three round up to a four. So my answer is going to be 13%, which means that that roof has a pitch of 13%. Notice we, we use the same steps. Rise over run, you divide, then you take the answer you get, and you multiply it by 100. That changes it to a percent, 
and then you round to wherever it is you're supposed to round. And the instructions tell you that. The instructions underneath the answer box. Okay. So we move on to intercepts. Very important. We need to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept and talk about what they are. Okay. Well, you get the x-intercept or intercepts So I'm going to write it like this so that I'm writing it for for every function we're going to deal with. Put the S in parentheses there, which means intercept or intercepts. You get this from setting Y equal to zero. And you get the y-intercept. There'll only be one if it's a function. You get that from setting x equal to zero. So it's a two-step process. First, I'm going to let y equal zero and find the x-intercept. Let me move this up. Well, I moved it too far up. Now I can't see what I'm dealing with. Okay, so if I have x plus 5y equals 10, that means I'm going to have x plus 5 times 0 equals 10. Well, five times zero is zero. So that will give me X equals 10. Now I know that my Y, uh, my X intercept is going to be 10, zero. And that zero will always be in the second position when you're on the X axis. Let's go ahead, well, actually, if you're graphing on my math lab, you need to have both the points you're going to use first. All right, now I'm going to let X equal zero. And that's going to give me the Y intercept. So if I have X plus five Y equals 10, and I'm letting X equal zero, I'll have zero plus five Y equals 10, which means I'll have 5 times y, that's what 5y is, 5 times y equals 10, so I divide by 5, and I divide by 5, which cancels out the 5s over here, and that gives me y equals 2, so the y-intercept is going to be 0, 2. Notice for the x-intercept, the zero is in the second position. For the y-intercept, the zero is in the first position. All right, we're going to graph these. 10, zero. and zero, two, positive two, so that's here. Now, I'm going to connect these with a line. And then save it.
And those are just about the exact same steps you would use in my math lab. And for those of you who haven't graphed in my math lab, I'm going to make a little video after this showing how you would do the, well, how you would do similar problems in my math lab, because even though this problem came from my math lab, I stand almost no chance of ever getting it back because everything, well, everything changes. Yeah, that formula, that equation will, will change the next time and the next time and the next time, and none of us has any control over that, except the programmers. All right, so to get the x-intercept, you let y equal zero. To get the y-intercept, you let x equal zero. Now, we're going to do the same thing again. Oh, no, we're not. No, we're not. There is another problem like this in your homework. But now we're going to move on to this problem, which uses an entirely different method of graphing so that you don't have to calculate anything. You can just go straight into my math lab or straight to this grid and start graphing. And I'm going to show you how, but we have to have a little discussion first. Let me see what the next problem is. Aha, good. Well, we're just, this is a very straightforward problem. The next one is a little more complicated, which will let me earn my money, my big bucks. Okay, we have y equals 8 fifths x plus 7. What does that mean? That means our slope. Huh, okay. Our slope. Well, let me erase that or it'll look like a negative slope. Goodness gracious. Our slope. I'll, I'll, I will get there. Yes, I will. Our slope is eight fifths. Eight over five. Now remember that slope is rise over run. Where the rise is vertical or movement in the vertical direction up and down. And the run is horizontal left and right. Okay. We're going to use the slope as a road map and we start at the y intercept which is 7 on the y axis okay now i want you to well, this is going to force me to have a more extensive conversation as well. I didn't really want to. I thought this would be straightforward. It looks straightforward, but it's not. Let me tell you what I had planned to do. And now I have a change of plans. Do I need to throw this problem out? And no, I don't. So there. Huh. The way this problem is set up, this is what I would do. Step one. Put a dot. On seven. On the Y axis. That's not hard. Step two, you 
use the slope as a roadmap. Here, use the slope as a roadmap to the next step, to the next point. So I'm, I'm going to write that out. Here's how you do that. If I had had a larger grid, this is what I had planned to do. Put a dot on seven and then use the slope, which is eight fifths, eight over five, as a roadmap. Eight over five is positive eight over positive five. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is since vertical movement is given to us on the top, that positive means we're going to go eight units up. because positive means up. And then five units to the right. I don't know why I use the words instead of number, but numbers, but oh well. And what I had planned to do was this. Start at seven. And then go up eight units. One, two, three. Well, I can't go up any farther. So that totally messed up my whole plan. What I had planned to do is go up eight. At, well, no. Up eight and to the right five and put a dot, another dot. And then line up these two points. Not gonna work. Is it hopeless? No, it's never hopeless. It just so happens that since negative divided by negative is positive, that positive eight fifths can also be written as negative eight over negative five. Negative over negative is positive and the slope is positive. So um, it's the same thing numerically, but now I can go down eight units. and to the left five units. To make my other point and it's not hopeless. OK. I'm going to do that. I start at seven. Any way you look at it, but now what I'm doing is this. I'm pretending that this. is my equation because numerically it's the same thing. Okay, I start at seven and now I go down eight units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and two, don't make a mark, to the left five. One, two, three, four, five. 
there. So now I will get a line and I'll line these up. Ta-da! I have graphed the line using the slope and the y-intercept. But sometimes you have to change it a little bit to an equivalent form. But if you can't go one way, just go a different direction. Okay. Now that was a little scary. I hadn't planned on it. Now this is a horse of a different color. Not that different. Our slope is negative four thirds. Our slope, ha is negative four thirds, but there are equivalent ways that that slope can be written. We can write it negative four over positive three, or we can write it positive four over negative three. What's the difference? Negative four, I would go down four units. Positive three, I would go, I would go to the right three units. Here, I would go up four units and I would go to the left three units. It just all depends on what's easier. If I start here on the y-intercept, and I'm going to start on the y-intercept no matter what. Okay, so here's where I start. I put a dot. So step one is still step one. Put a dot on the y-intercept. My cat has just discovered a box. Uh, put a dot on the Y intercept. Now this U, this is a U, I need to make it look like a U. Then step two is going to be using the slope as a roadmap. But this time I have more choices than usual. Use slope as roadmap. To the next point. So I'm either going to use negative four over positive three or positive four over negative three, which means here I'd go down four and to the right three. Here I would go up four and to the left three. So we're just gonna see what's easier. Going down four, one, two, three, four, and then to the right three, one, two, three, is possible, though I'm not really comfortable um, being that close to the end of the grid, I could do it. 
What if I went up four? Let's go up four and to the left three. One, two, three, four up, and one, two, three to the left. You don't have to do both, you only have to do one. But this is just to show you that either way, you're going to be on the same line. So let's graph this. And that's how you use the slope and the y-intercept to graph a line. It also helps you remember all the different ways you can write slope. That a positive slope is the same thing as negative over negative, either way. And a negative slope gives you the choice of writing the slope in two ways. Negative four over positive three, positive four over negative three, and what those accompanying motions are. See, we're a little more uh, mentally strenuous today. Now, we're going to be talking about parallel and perpendicular. And you may or may not have talked about this in beginning algebra, but you definitely talk about it in college algebra. Maybe you skip intermediate algebra in dealing with this, you do. OK, but this class, after all, is combined intermediate and college. So let us declare that we are now stepping into college algebra for these last few problems in today's homework. We, uh, we need to determine if these lines are parallel or perpendicular. Well, parallel means that the lines go side by side forever. They have the same slope, but different y-intercepts. The most important thing, the very most important thing, is that parallel lines have equal slopes. I'm going to say the same. Oh dear! Okay, so we have to find out. Let's do it. This line, well, we already see that. That's y equals 2x plus 1, so I'm going to write it that way. All right, if this line has slope two, they are parallel. And look, I have to solve for y. Um, that means I would add two x to both sides of this equation. And so the two x's zero out, and I will have y equals two x minus Five. So yes, the slope of this line is two. Okay, M equals two for both lines. So they are parallel.
Let's take a look at them and you'll see. Let's see, I'm going to have 2x plus 1 and 2x minus 5. I'm going to go to y equals. And I'm going to clear. All right. 2x. Is it plus 1? Doggone it. Plus 1. 2x plus 1, I'm going to put that in y1, and then I hit my down arrow, and I come to y2. 2x minus 5. And now I'm going to graph those. Hit graph. Okay, here's 2x plus 1, there's plus 1, and 2x minus 5, there's negative 5. These two lines go side by side forever. They're never going to tilt into each other. They're never going to cross. And so there you have it. These are parallel lines, very typical parallel lines. Now, we're going to look and see, are these graphs parallel? Are the graphs of these lines parallel? Well, let's see, this is pretty easy to solve for y. All I have to do is subtract four from both sides. So that will give me y equals seven x minus four. Now over here, this is gonna be a little harder. All right, I have some choices here. So let's do, do it the easier way. I'm going to have, let's make this red. 6x minus y equals negative 4. I'm going to cheat a little bit and add y to both sides of the equation. So that gives me uh, these zero out, this gives me 6x equals y minus 4. Now I'm going to add 4 to both sides to get y by itself. These zero out, I'm left with y equals 6x plus 4. So no, this line is y equals 6x plus 4. And notice our slope is 7 in the first line and 6 in the second line. They do not cross. I mean, they do cross. They are not parallel. Here's George. Hello, George. Stay away from my coffee. Okay, so these are not parallel. Let's take a look at if, if I graph them. Come on, get on my lap. You'll do less harm if you're on my lap. Ladies and gentlemen, George is in the building here. Okay, so let's go to y equals and clear y1 and y2. I clear, arrow down, clear, arrow back up. My first line is going to be 7x minus 4. Arrow down. My second one is going to be 6x plus 4. graph. Y 
they're close to being parallel, but you can see that they're farther apart here than they are here. So they are slowly, slowly, slowly getting to the point where they cross. Let's see, I'm going to make the window a little bit taller. How about... Uh, let's take it to 30. Nope, not yet. Let's take it to 50. I want to see now. Woo! OK, I'm going to 60. No, I'm not. I'm going to go to 100. Live dangerously. See, they do cross. These are not parallel lines. They don't go side by side forever. OK, quick way to get back to the standard screen is Zoom 6. But we don't need the graph now. OK, now we're going to talk about something that's definitely more difficult. Perpendicular. There are several ways to prove that two lines are or are not perpendicular. One of them is um, okay, had to think of how to put it in words. The slope of the first line. I love this cat. Multiplied by the slope of the second line. equals negative one. Now that's the sure way to find out. So we're going to do that. So my first line, I'll even uh, label them line one, line two. So for line one, I've got 3y minus x equals 9. I'm going to add x to both sides of the equation. Negative x plus x is 0. I'm left with 3y on the left and x plus 9 on the right. Now there's a, an invisible 1 in front of that x. That'll become important because I'm dividing both sides by three, three, three. And so what that gives me is y equals one third x plus three. 
All right, so the slope of the first line is one third. Now, oh, this is going to be easy. Line two. I have failed to give George enough attention. Y plus 3X equals 5. All I have to do here is subtract 3X from both sides. Minus 3X minus 3X. On the left, 3X minus 3X is 0. I'm left with Y all by itself equals negative 3x plus 5. So the slope of the um, second line is m equals negative 3. Now I'm going to multiply negative 3 times 1 third. You can do this in your calculator or you can do it by hand. If I do it by hand, I do it like this. So they are perpendicular. The symbol for perpendicular is that. They don't ask you that in my math lab, I don't think. Okay, now let's do it in the calculator. Hit the negative button and three, and then multiply by one divided by three. And you get negative one. You could have also put one third in parentheses, and that would have been actually safer. There is a way to type fractions. Um, I'm not going to go into it here, but um, maybe when we're farther along with the calculator, but there are a lot of people here who, I mean, there always are, um, who don't feel comfortable with the graphing calculator, and so that would just add to their stress. So I'm just going to let it go right now and do this the straightforward way. Oh no, we're getting out early again? Hmm. Well, then we will have a 15 minute answer time or a half hour answer time since it's 1130. How about using the next half hour for a question and answer time? Are you up? Uh, how are you doing on the homework? Would you like uh, help with any of the homework questions. Would you like to discuss anything that we've done here? We can do that right now. I do not have a pressing social calendar. 